Hello again and welcome to part 16 in my tutorial series on how to program the Kurzweil PC3. Okay, so today what I want to talk about is um, physical modeling synthesis uh, and, and, and it's specifically about creating formants on the PC3 within VAST. Um, there's a formant filter that's available in the effects section, but I want to be able to make formant filters in VAST um, to use as, as, as part of a synthesis chain so that I can uh, have more control over them. There, there, there are just several advantages, I think, to doing it that way. Okay, so enough talking. Let's get a, go ahead and start working here. So uh, to do this, I'm going to have, um, first of all, a, uh, a source, uh, which in this case is just going to be a sawtooth wave. Um, and it's going to go through a bank of three parallel bandpass filters. And these are going to... Um, uh, B essentially are, are going to, the, the three filters in parallel will create what would be termed a formant filter. Okay, so let's go ahead and set all that stuff up there. Okay, let's go to the AUG page here and I'm going to pick a sawtooth waveform. All right, there we go. All right, perfect. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to create um, uh, essentially three more layers that are uh, bandpass filters that uh, take this, this as input. And I'm going to sign some sliders so that we can move the individual frequencies that form our, and, uh, our formant filter um, around a bit. So let's go ahead and go to new layer. So I'm going to, I've got a new layer here. Um, go to the key map page, set this to zero, do all our usual stuff here, amp amp or um, uh, velocity tracking to zero, and then on the amp amp page, I'm going to set this to user. Okay, so for the algorithm here, I'm actually going to pick 101. All right, so I'm going to have um, an alt input. I'm going to set that alt input to layer one, and while I'm, we're at it, let's go down here to layer one and turn down the output. So... All right, so now we should have layer one sounding through layer two. There's no DSP yet, so that it won't be apparent. So let's add in here a bandpass filter. Okay, there we go. There, I think you can uh, hear that on the camera. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to be able to control this with sliders um, so that I can, I can play around with the frequencies of my filter. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to sign... Uh, slider A, and, and I'm going to set these up so that they have non-overlapping frequency ranges, but we're going to cover all the frequencies between C0 and C8. So this first one is going to have a range of 4,800 cents, so it's going to start at C0 and go up to C4. Okay, and I'm going to put um, the depth or the width on slider 2, and I'm going to set that width to uh, 4 octaves, which corresponds to the frequency range that um, I've set up for this particular um, uh, filter. Okay, so now to create the other two, uh, all we have to do is hit dupe layer once, dupe layer twice, and we have our other two bandpass filters. And because um, we've already assigned them to, uh, we, we've already set up the ALG page, they already have inputs set up with uh, the signal coming in from layer one, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so now all we need to do is come in here, and so uh, on layer two we have our first filter, on layer three we have our second filter, and now if you remember we want to set this to um, C4, so let's go ahead and put this up to C4 because that's where the last one left off was at C4. Okay, I'm going to pick a different slider here, um, slider C or MIDI 22 for uh, source one, and for the depth control, or for the depth amount, excuse me, I'm going to put it to 2400 cents. Okay, so this is going to cover the range from C4 to C6 uh, as far as frequency is concerned. And so, therefore, for width, um, I'm going to assign slider D to control width. I'm going to put the width at two octaves. Okay, so now. As I play around with the sliders and as I play keys, you can hear the sound kind of starting to take on, um, you know, different characters as I move these bands around with the sliders and as I as I um, 
increase or decrease the width of the bandpass filters. Okay, so now let's go up to layer 4 and we're going to do the same thing on layer 4. Uh, we want this to be um, C8, so let's see here, that will be here, almost there, and there it is, C8, or I'm sorry, C6, my bad. Um, we're going to go up to C8, but we want to start at C6, okay? We're going to pick uh, for this filter, slider E is going to control the depth, and again, 2400 cents because this is now going to cover the range from C6 to C8. And then for band path pass width, we're going to pick slider F, and we're going to set a, a depth of two octaves. So now we have a band, we have a formant filter, and we can control the frequency of each formant. We can control the width of, of each of the filters. Which will be useful for um, getting different sound characters. Okay, so now if you go out on the internet uh, and you search around, you can find um, uh, formant frequency lists for a lot of instruments and a lot of different uh, for a lot of, that will cover a lot of different scenarios. Um, and 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 I don't have a list of those in front of me uh, right now at the moment. Um, but you can then use this setup to essentially um, emulate uh, the formants for vowel sounds, human vowel sounds, also to uh, emulate, say, like resonant bodies. And um, by that, that could mean anything from a flute to a drum to a uh, guitar body or, or any of those things. And you can, of course, change these bands. You know, I don't necessarily have to have them be non overlapping. I can, of course, you know, I could set this, say, like, for instance, to C5. Um, so it overlaps a bit there and, uh, you know, change this to say 3600, whoops, let's type in the right numbers here, there we go, and now my, my second and my third band overlap with each other. So if, if I, if I have two two peaks that are supposed to be relatively close to each other uh, in, in terms of, of hertz, I can, I can create that. Now, uh, you have lots of other control, too, over how these things respond across the keyboard and how the formants move across the keyboard. For instance, um, some instruments, uh, when you model them, they, the, 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 the formants move a bit as you move up and down the range of the instrument. So, I could do that by, say, for instance, setting this to two cents per key. And so over the, you know, over, say, 128 keys, that's 128 times two, that's like, what, 256 cents. So, so this filter's frequency will move uh, within a range of 256 cents over the keyboard. Um, so then I can... You know, but I can also go negative like this. So as I play up the keys, the, 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 the frequency moves down and, and vice versa. Uh, I can do the same thing with the width. Okay, I can have this also track um, uh, the keyboard. So for instance, I can make this filter get uh, progressively more narrow as I play up. Now I have just a very small amount right here, but I could turn this up. You know, and, and sometimes all you need is a very small amount in order to um, emulate um, any particular instrument. And of course I can add velocity tracking. You know, that's another thing with uh, instruments. A lot of instruments respond differently, especially wind instruments, obviously, but, but, but most, most instruments do respond differently depending on how hard you play, how hard you blow, for instance, with a wind instrument. So, uh, for instance, maybe if I blow more, I get much more of a, uh, um, I get a narrower peak at this particular format.
Now, that's not particularly audible here. Let's see if we can... My technique sucks, so I can't do these things repeatedly. But, but you get the idea now that, that by, by putting bandpass filters in, in parallel and controlling um, you know, how, how uh, the frequencies change if you play across the keyboard, if they change as you play across the keyboard, how they can change with velocity, and you can do all of that stuff, uh, which is really powerful. And we haven't even gotten into the stuff that you can do when you throw synthesis and different kinds of synthesis into the mix along with um, formants. So that concludes this particular video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.